Now it's time to dive in to the deep part of the oaks or hollow trees. Oaks, a lot of diversity. Today That's it's mainly, oh, thank you, <laughs> it's mainly the beetles. And you know, there are a lot of species living on the oak. But we will, of course, focus on the species living inside the oak now. And in Sweden, there is 550 saprosylic species living, meaning that they live on dead wood, or the fungi on dead wood, or they can be predators or parasites on those other, uh, other saprosylic beetles here. The reason is that oaks are so rich in different microhabitats, and they live very long, so it's easy for the species to gather, to, to find these trees in the long run. The other explanation we had earlier from Kalolov that the Quercus is it's so old that genus, so the evolution have created many different species during history. And you also know this root process that they, need, they are in need of fungi to start eating the wood. The oak wood is too hard for the species from, from the start. So they, they, they need to be fungi involved. Wood mold, I think most in this audience know that now it now, nowadays. In Swedish it's, have, it's even a better sound. Murm. <laughs> and it's the best if you talk in my dialect. Uh, the <laughs> Then it's murm. And it can be a lot of stuff, different stuff inside there, but it's, it's an, actually it's a, a wood compost. It's mainly consists of, of small fragments of wood, but it can then be all, everything from dead uh, leaves. It can be things from birds and other animals living there, and also the, the small insects that have developed there, and etc. And the droppings they produced. All kinds of stuff. And that makes that every hollow, as you understand also from, from Karl Olof, that that's why the trees are so uh, different. It depends what has happened in the hollow and how old the hollow is, and etc. Most often we, don't, we, are, we can only guess how it looks inside an oak. But here you can see an example how it actually can look. Here an, an oak, one and a half meter in di diameter, have, <coughs> have fallen. And it's totally smashed and out a whole, uh, probably it's hundreds and hundreds of years of yakdo nests. They have filled this tree over and over again with a cubic here on wood mold. And, and that's the thing that we want to copy, of course, that stuff. Because in there, there are hundreds of species living and for hundreds of years. Of course, there. It's a lot of uh, reason why it's rich. It gives shelter from predators. It it's makes it a stable temperature and stable moisture in there. It protects, at least here in Sweden, from uh, too much rain and, and too cold condition. Uh, it has often a continuous production of, 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 of dead wood inside there. So if you, if you are a beetle and have found your hollow, it's a good idea to stay there for long because they can over and over again, year after year, find probably the same kind of food and same kind of microhabitat. And then I will mention the other reasons why it's uh, an interesting habitat and, 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 and affect what species you find. But you can quickly look here for some of the uh, aspects that, that do, do, do why they differ so much and what's steering the, the, the richness and, and the species composition. Not to forget, even if I don't talk so much about it, it's, it's not only beetles, it's other insects and other invertebrates living here. So here you can see also the crying flies, some species actually living in wood, wood mold, and also some other dipterans like surfids. And actually those groups like it better when it's wet. If it's rain coming into the hollow, they like better when it's a little bit uh, lack of oxygen in, in, the, in, the, in the wood mold. And then we have, of course, some pseudoscorpions that are small and we seldom see them. 
but are really cute when you, see, when you find them. Sometimes you get the question, but is it only the oaks that you should care of? Isn't there other trees that can be interesting? And of course, at least in Sweden, we have been a little bit too focused on oaks. So here is a, a study we, uh, I made together with a, a master student in, here in Sweden, where we, we compared with maple <coughs> and ash and, 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 and a lime tree. And actually, we could see here that the oaks seems to be 20% richer. But as you see, the other trees are also rich. So we, we, they are also, we can take them in consideration. Another reason why we should take them in consideration is this. When we compare the species composition. It's a little bit tricky here, but all the dots is one tree, or at, at least <laughs> a, a trap on a tree. And the species composition found in each trap uh, give the position here in this graph. So the more close they are to each other, the more similar is the, the, the fauna found. And then you can see here, the windows traps that catch all the species that uh, fly around the trees, is uh, some overlaps there. They, they, are, they are species that seems to use all, uh, all four tree species. But if you look on the right one, where the trap has been in inside the trunk, it mainly lives in wood mold or other stuff in the hollow, it's even more similar. And in average, it was 70% overlap between all the species giving us the information that, of course, we should care about other trees when we do our ma ma nature conservation work out in the, in, the, in the landscape. But now to the question, is it possible to mimic and create hollow trees artificially? <coughs> of course, you have heard about this. But I shouldn't take the, the, the full credit for, for this idea. I have been thought about it, of course, for, for a long time, but it wasn't uh, 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 since, since I went to UK and met an old man called Ted Green. He was old then, 20 years ago, but he's still alive and, and, and kicking. And he's uh, still uh, have a <coughs> 86. 86, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the idea that he had was to in Windsor Forest, the Windsor Castle Forest, re-erected some hollow beech trees with a really, really rare click beetle living. You know. It was the, uh, one of the few trees known in the UK by that time, a really rare one. And he thought, if I, if I fill this tree with sawdust and oak leaves and, oh wow, there is a dead cat, I filled it also with, dead, with this dead cat. And then he found some pigeon shit and also <laughs> filled it. And he forgot about that. But I think there after six, seven years or so, there were some entomologists heard about this entomologist, and they went there together with him, and actually the population had increased. They liked this thing, this stuff. And when uh, Thomas Aronius and me visit uh, UK and discussed with, with Ted Green, then we are okay, we have to do this scientifically, we can't do this uh, Ted Green uh, guessing, here, or even if it was successful, we have to scale it up a little bit. So then we came, there is Thomas, he should be here today, uh, but he's in Uppsala probably. So we started a project with boxes to fill, yeah, you can say it's a bird box that we fill, fill with stuff, that was the idea. We're quite small, 70 liter, so more or less half a meter high. Uh, the material was oak wood and the position for four meter up on the trunk. That was because Toma Thomas was uh, afraid of height. And when he was <laughs> four meters up on the ladder, his legs started to shake like this. <laughs> and then we say, okay, we, we put it here. And it was always 4.2 meters up, up. So he would have an exact uh, height when he get uh, afraid for the height. But it was good. We don't need, need to measure that. <clears throat> uh, the content, we fill it 70% with, with the sawdust and oak leaves and some water. And on the top, uh, we, we made this, <coughs> we drilled holes, and in between, we uh, made this, I don't know in English, you, you, we carved the dish, 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 ditches in, in the wood. Channels. Channels. Okay, channels. <laughs> so the water can find a way to these holes. 
And the, the idea was how it lean one or two of these ho holes will get some water in and, and fill. And that we will have, we'll have a, gradient, a, a gradient inside the box. So it can be wet in one corner and dry in another. So we can, then the species can show themselves what they like. Uh, by that time we had uh, uh, clay in the bottom. Five, five kilograms of clay. Which is really stupid when you're getting older and, and not so strong any longer because the box was really heavy. <laughs> so nowadays we use plas plastic sheets instead. But for ecological reasons, I think it's quite a good idea to use uh, uh, clay in the bottom to keep moisture. Okay, what happened? The same season, when we look through the window that we have created on these boxes, we could actually see a lot of mycelia growing there. And that was what we was after because the insects, the beetle larva, they don't eat the, the wood. They can't consume lignin and... and uh, is it lignin in English? Lignin. 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 lignin and cellulosa. They need the fungi to, use, to do that work. And then they eat the fungi. Or perhaps the bacteria. So that was a good sign. And then they start to grow really f the fruit bodies of the fungi too. Several species. So we start to feel, ah, this is something, this is something going on here that can help us. After two years, when we digged in this artificial wood mold, there were a lot of droppings, shit, <laughs> from larva, scarabid larva, scarab larva. And we couldn't say which species, of course, but we had a good feeling. And after two years, we were hatching. Well, in Swedish, we say brown. Brun guldbagge. In English I don't know because you don't have this species in the UK. Uh, but it's one of the nicer, bigger beetles that really consume the wood mold and make a special structure where they're with the droppings in the wood mold. And it was better than that. In the 47 boxes we found four and a half, four, four and a half thousand individuals from 114 saprocylic beetles. And we were more or less shocked that it was so easy to create a habitat for most or many of the species. And actually it was 77% percentage if we compare with the living hollow trees that we have studied the years before. So it was quite successful, you must say. Here is just for the nerds in the public that can study the, this uh, list of the most common species found in the boxes. If we are lucky, we might perhaps see some of them tomorrow when we are out in the field. And I will, I will bring a box so you can see them at least pinned. Here is an, another list of the rare ones, the red listed ones, that are, of course, a little bit more uh, I'll say, important for us because these are the guys that we really need to, to, to give help. But, of course, there were other uh, species too. Here are some sylphids and three species of tipulids or, or crane flies. And you see that there are a little bit, um, what do you say, stronger built uh, species that live in wood, wood uh, uh, material than in this, uh, what do you say, the, the wet clay uh, stuff near uh, wetlands where, where all the other crane flies li lives. So this is saprocylic species. Yeah. But we mustn't forget that there are also ants that can use these habitats. And here we in Sweden we have these two, uh, blank svart trämyra and brun trämyra. And the funny thing with these are that they are stupid enough to uh, let beetles live in their nests. The beetles give them sugar and they accept that their children are eaten by the beetles. In a, and those be beetles are also rare, of course, and need uh, help. Now you have to concentrate here, because here is a, a figure showing how similar was actually the fauna living in the Hall of Oaks, the crosses, 90 crosses, 90 uh, oaks that we have studied. When we compare with the boxes sitting on Hall of Oaks, you can see they're very similar. Uh, actually, the, the, the beetles that move in show a, a, a large uh, similarity. 
The next gang here is the boxes uh, between 100 and 600 meters from the source areas, the, the hollow tree areas. And you see they are a little bit less uh, similar. And the last uh, boxes were one and a half kilometer away from the source areas. And you see they are not so similar any longer, giving us information that they have problem to move that far, to find the boxes when they are 1500 meters away. So it gives us a little bit more information than, than the, the data uh, Kalolov showed us earlier. What kind of distances are we talking about? Now the fu funny thing was that the pseudoscorpions that we found, they actually prefer the boxes before the hollow trees. Don't ask me why, but uh, it was really funny. And this species, the Antrinogenes stelle, is actually one of the next species. So that's a good information that it actually lo loved the boxes so much. And this is not new to you, of course. How can we use these boxes? Yeah, we can, we can improve some of the uh, sm small habitats that have too few uh, boxes, or uh, few hollow trees. We can connect them, of course. And the last thing that uh, we, uh, Germany will probably be the first uh, country that do this. We let the boxes get, get colonized and then we can move them to areas to help, help them. Oh wow, it's five minutes. Oh my god. Uh, here, uh, we mustn't forget that we can never, um, what do you say? Mm. Ah, what do you say? Yeah, the, 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 the trees are, of course, uh, the best. You can never say that, okay, you can put up a box instead of an of a, um, oak. Bridging the gap boxes. Uh, I won't go into much. Uh, we can look at these boxes out in field tomorrow, how they are built, because it's a lot of information that you need to build them. So I will just pass it uh, like this. Uh, but now is the result. We have 400 boxes in the project. Uh, we, we aim to study 10% of them. So there are th 39 boxes that I visited two times with two different kind of, of traps. And they were, uh, the manager were, were kind enough to make a new entrance just above the uh, level of the wood mold. So I could put pitfalls on top and I can also take some sample in to the laboratory. And, and uh, uh, with, with light and heat, uh, force the beetles down in a box. I also checked the boxes for bats and you will understand later why. Because some of the bo uh, boxes we have actually try to create a uh, good uh, habitat for the, for the uh, bats. But unfortunately, no sign of it. Uh, in total, we found nearly 1,000 individuals from 100 saprocelic beetles. And so that's good. Here we have the most common one. So I will pass that, as not, not so many of you are ner nerdy enough for that. Here you can see that some of the species are then on the Swedish red list. So that's, that's good. But if we compare with the old oaks that we studied before, with the small boxes from the research that Thomas and Romeronis and me uh, made, with the beat, uh, these boxes from the, this project, you can see there is, isn't that good. There is a little bit less species in our big boxes. And I have an explanation. One explanation is how it's constructed. Is, is my, my idea. So here you can see that construction on the left side with these bars inside creating one problem. The other problem you will see later. The plank distance was another problem I can see. The, the bigger distance between the planks when they dry the boxes, the less species you get. It dry out probably the, the boxes. And the same, the number of species was also. So both the individuals and the numbers was decreasing with, with the drought probably. So that's a problem. We have solved it on the boxes now, putting, uh, we covered the, the, uh, the cracks with, with that, with distances. Problem two was this thing. And what happened, what I could see, is that the, the wood mold kind of stayed here because it was caught by this ribbon inside and they created two different 
uh, wood bolt uh, things inside, and that I think also dry out a bit. Yeah. And one thing that I would like to improve the boxes too is to make the hollows here a little bit bigger, so we get in more water. Because one problem with the big boxes we have seen here is that it's too dry, and then it's not the the, the fungi component is not working as it should. So it's not so much of a, a compost. It's more like a dry condition uh, hollow tree. Of course, there are some species living in, in that environment too, but we didn't, we didn't create that gradient that we want. So that could be a one reason why it wasn't as, uh, as rich as it could be. Okay, okay. that's it. Thank you.